new, 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 new. So, as we do new products, I have to do a reminder every single week because we will run out of Ada boxes we if you will. haven't already. Um, you heard about it. You don't want to fear missing out. It's the biggest fear that everyone has now of missing out. So don't miss out. Number one fear. best you quarterly electronic subscription box. You can solve this with a trip to adabox.com. But very soon when we run out, it'll say, sorry, we ran out. Yeah, once we run out, we run out. Yeah. Okay, what do we got? Okay, starting off, we've got this screen. So 1.3 inch color TFT screen. We're actually using it in a bunch of parks, including the Clue and also uh, the TFT bonnet we're showing off. And uh, maybe you want to make something with this display or maybe you crack the display and you want to replace it. We have replacement displays available. Um, we even have a part number if you want to use it in your design. You, uh, look at the part number, we put it in the technical description and uh, purchase that to match it up with this display. It's a beautiful color TFT IPS display. Keep watching in the video and we'll show more of it. Okay, next up. Next up, from SparkFun, we are stocking their uh, Thing Plus Quick Shield, also known as um, a Quick or Stem QT Feather Wing. They like to use Thing Plus, but um, it's also a Feather Wing, uh, which is fine. I, you can call me. it whatever you want. Call However, it whatever you want. It's a feather. Here's <laughs> what it is. Um, so uh, with these, you get uh, four JST SH connectors connected to the I squared C port. You can see the power ground and I squared C pins labeled. Uh, these are the standard pins on every feather. So unless somebody's making something that's not feather compatible, you will plug this in on top and connect all sorts of sensors to it, like seen here. So hold on, I will plug this in. So what I like is that there's four plugs and even though um, our Stemma QT boards and quick boards are often uh, chainable. Like you can connect another I2C device on the other side. What's nice about this is that you can you can connect as many as you like. Maybe I'll back this off a little bit, and then I'll focus and focus lock. Okay, so um, here we've got like a humidity sensor. Here we've got accelerometer, gyro, and over here, you know, I connected an OLED. So it's all plug and play, you know, once you, you do have to solder um, headers onto the feather wing and then plug it into your feather. In this case, I have a, I think I have a NRF52840 feather or something here. Um, but then you could plug and play all of our sensors and displays to make really easy sensor outputs. And this is an Arduino, but of course it works in CircuitPython as well. Great addition to the feather wing family. It has been renamed as the barbecue um, thing wing. Yes. It's, it's a barbecue a, thing wing. It's a barbecue thing wing. And so it has been said. I love barbecue wings. All right. That's in the store now. That's okay. right. Next up. Next up. We have a little bit of an update to this cable. This is a USB-C FTDI cable. And what I initially wanted to stock was a cable with 5-volt power and 3-volt signal. We were sent ones with 5-volt power and 5-volt signal. Now, as of February 12, 2020, they are now 5 volt power, 3 volt signal, but they are 5 volt compliant. So you can use them with either 5 volt or 3 volt, volt um, signal devices, such as like uh, Pro Trinkets or like uh, Arduino compatibles or connecting to a, um, a Wi Fi router or whatever. Uh, and it's USB C, so it's great for people who have modern computers that you have USB C ports. You plug it in, it's very durable, and you get the standard FTDI pinout. Okay, next up. Um, we have the FOMU. We've been carrying the TOMU from um, Zobs, and now we have if you like FOMU. Tomu, you're like FOMU. If you like <laughs> TOMU, you're in love. Look how this is. This is bananas. Look it's how tiny so this is. So tiny. So this is a USB port-sized FPGA development board, and it even runs. I think either Mi MicroPython or CircuitPython or both. Yes. Uh, you can even see it's got like a, a little bit of uh, flash on there. Um, if you want to program FPGAs, look at this. Ridiculous. And you want to fit in your USB port. I also, they will do mention though, it's kind of early. Like for example, there's these capacitive touch pads and they're still under development. They haven't quite gotten that part of it. But I think if you want to play around with FPGA development and like you don't want to have to haul around a big kit, it's got like a USB bootloader. You can, you know, again, it just fits in your USB port and you're ready to FPGA anywhere you want. So um, check out the specs. It's really long. I didn't memorize all of them, but um, Zobs has done such a great job with this. I know yeah. he's been working really hard in the last like, year or two on this project. Okay. Next up, the Art of Electronics X chapters. Now, so people who didn't even think the Art of Electronics third edition was going to come out, well, now we've got even more. This is a beautiful hardcover this update cool. with even more from Horowitz and Hill. Um, it's real. It's like a slim version, but um, lots of stuff. Like they couldn't even fit everything in. 
So there's a more, and it's beautiful. It's, it's got that same, uh, you know, layout. I've got the, my Ele Art and Electronics t-shirt on in celebration of the X Chapters release. Um, more stuff. I mean, like, this is all the stuff that they don't even teach you in class, by the way. Like, you don't learn this in school. Um, and uh, I really love the Art Electronics 3rd edition. I think it was a really big update. Yep. Uh, we just got these today. Um, so I'm, I think I'm we're excited. like the first ones home. to have them. Yeah, we might be. I'm going to take these home and uh, read through it. But uh, Nine Hearts in Hell, this is good stuff. They said, real to rail op-amp warnings, current feedback, low noise, ultra-isolated power, high voltage, a lot of high voltage stuff in here. Uh, PWM, for DC B PWM for DC Motors, a myth demolished. I have to know what that is because I do that all the time. Anatomy of a counterfeit iPhone charger. This is a good time. Good reading. I always think about if we were to have contact with a uh, alien civilization, what uh, people will we have try to interact with them with their technology and what yeah. what resources will we give them if we could communicate? And I always think like if I needed like if something landed like I want Bunny and you to reverse engineer it. And I thought like what's the if it, but if there was like a, a some resources about like some of our technology, it's Horowitz and Hill. Yeah, I'll just say Art that. of Electronics. Like here you go. Go this for is, it. This is as good as it gets for us right now. This is it. This is it. If you can really know us, then you can make all the stuff that we're you know working on. Okay. Okay. Next up. Look, I think about these things. It's, it's important that you, if somebody has to. Yeah, okay. Okay, so next up we have a pretty big product update, big enough that I wanted to uh, sort of announce it as a new product. So we've had this FT232H breakout board for a very long time. It was lovely, but I wanted to give it a little bit of a makeover. So um, the thing that's important for people who have been using these, and we sell a lot of them, and so, so I was very careful revising this, it is the same physical size and the mounting holes are in the same locations and it's pinout compatible. However, I added two more pins. So where there were no pins, there is now a three volt pin and a ground pin because a lot of people were asking, hey, I really want a three volt output. And there's a three volt regulator on there that gives you 500 milliamps. So if you wanted to use this with, if you've been using this FTDI breakout with three volt logic devices, you no longer need a separate regulator. It's now built in and you can just get it off of those extra two pins. Um, otherwise, the schematic is the same and the pinout is the same. We've uh, moved the micro USB over to USB-C because if we're going to do a makeover, you might as well, as well. update to USB-C. Um, so that's very handy. And best of all, because a lot of people were using these with I2C devices, we made it much easier to use with I2C devices by adding an I2C mode switch. So for I2C, if you've used these before, you know you have to connect D0 and D1 or D1 and D2, I don't remember. They have to connect them together. And it's kind of annoying because you have to use a jumper and people forget and they're like, why is my I2C not working? So we now have a switch. And if you want to use it in I2C mode, you flip the switch and it jumpers those two pins for you so you don't have to remember. And there's also now a, as you may remember from five minutes ago, a STEM QT or quick connector. So like that sensor that I showed, this pressure sensor, um, you can now plug it in directly. So there's no solder required. Does it work required. with the barbecue? red thing hot wing it works with barbecue hot wings <laughs> well it, you want to connect to the hot wing because it's both trying to control the i squared c got it but if you want to connect you know we have um you know these oled displays that have okay. the quick connectors we have oled got we have it. sensors um we have like thermocouple whatever whatever you want over i squared c you plug and play and then usb c to your computer and um carter did a really amazing job in the last few months kind of in ex expectation that this would come out soon. Um, he wrote a really great guide on using all of our circuit Python libraries um, and Blinka, which is what we call the, the platform for running circuit Python on CPython. So when you plug this into your computer on your desktop, Mac, Windows, and Linux, you can use all like 200-ish of our circuit Python libraries to control various sensors and devices and actuators and motor controllers and all that good stuff with the FT232H. A lot of people also like it for debugging. You can do um, GPIO control. You can do open OCD, uh, JTAG control. Um, it does SPI at very high speeds, which is quite nice. You can use this to drive a little screen. It's, uh, you can even use it to control NeoPixels. We got that working. A little bit of a hack on the SPI port, but it is possible. So we really like the FT232H, so much so that we wanted to give it a little bit of a uh, remake over, and we did so. I think people will like it. Um, if you've been using it for a while, no fear, you'll be able to use it just the same as before. Okay, let's keep moving. Okay, we also have 
Uh, last week we forgot to, not forgot, but we, we ran out of time to add this uh, pirate audio version. We have the line out version, the speaker version, the built-in speaker version. Now we have the headphone jack version. So this version has a headphone, it has an I2S amplifier and then a headphone um, amplifier as well. So it can drive um, large headphones, especially ones that are like uh, 16 ohm or 300 ohm headphones. So you can make kind of your own little portable music player. Uh, and Pimeroni has great code to display album art with this. It works with Spotify, it has all these buttons. So a lovely little add-on for your Raspberry Pi. Okay, and the start of the show tonight, besides our community, our team, and you, lady, is this. Yes, we also, uh, coincidentally, very similar looking board, but this one doesn't have an audio amplifier. This is our uh, 1.3 inch TFT bonnet. So it's, it's simpler, it doesn't have audio, it has a little joystick and it has some buttons. And uh, I can show on the overhead, we, um, hold on, make a little bit of room here. I'm gonna clear up my FT232H demo. Um, we have a kernel module for it, so you know I can uh, use it. Oh, hold on, my keyboard got unplugged. There you go. Pardon me. So I can use this um, as a terminal, or you can use it with Python to display graphics or animations on here. You've got a five-way joystick, so this joystick goes up, down, left, right, and in, and then you've got two buttons. I wouldn't use it for gaming because it's it's very small and maybe not that comfortable. But for very let's, basic, let's go to like a website or something. User interfaces, yeah. <laughs> so one thing uh, that was fun is I was like, oh, you know, you know, I, I have Wi-Fi in this Raspberry Pi Zero W, so let's install Lynx, and then you can go to Google. It's going to say like you have 18 cookies you have to allow, but do you want to be tracked? I know, but then you We're can going use. To track. We're going to they have a Lynx interface, yeah. so you know you can um, you know you could put graphics on this, but the text it's text is, you know you can actually see it, and then uh, I can look for me, Google search. It's going to say, hey, you have more cookies. One cookie. One second. There's like seven. Do you want a cookie? But then, hey, check it out. You can All look right. look up stuff. So um, it's a you know it's a full text interface uh, you can use or again you can use it with Python you have two ways of using it either as like a kernel module where it's a terminal um, or a graphical uh, you can mirror HDMI onto it but again it's gonna be very small graphics so you could use this as a very very tiny Pico 8 player I think um, but it is a very small screen just to see my fingers how yeah. teeny it is high resolution but small but could be really good for like user interface projects, robotics it's projects, cool. wireless projects. So this is, uh, yeah, the TFT bonnet. And um, if you don't want the joystick and buttons, we also have the Pi, the Mini Pi TFT, which is just the screen available in the store as well. Cool.